This is Flicky for originally the Genesis or the Mega Drive, depending on where you live. And I don't know if this is noticeable to you, but I'm actually playing this game on the Sonic Ultimate Collection, Genesis Collection. Or Mega Drive Collection, depending on where you live. This game is addicting. That's purely the best thing I could say for this game, is it's addicting. The gameplay, it's really hard to, you know, not stop playing it, because the controls, for one thing, is very simple. And controls are supposed to be simple, to a degree. And it works very well, because when you have simple controls, you get a very addicting game sometimes. So this game, obviously, because it's so addicting, was on an arcade uh, system before, which shows how addicting it was, because, I mean, you plug quarters in, and then you want to keep playing. And this game does it very well. This game makes you want to continue playing, because whether it's, you know, get better or get further than you did before. And one of the things I find that makes this game really interesting is its story, I guess you could say. See, the goal of the game is you're Flicky, which is a bird, and you have to save other birds from tigers and lizards. And you have to take those birds and bring them to an elevator. WTF? I don't know. It works, though, because I just like that. I personally like that sort of thing where it just has, you know, this nonsensical idea and it just they just put it forward and it works. Sega should be making more games like that that where the story or the goal doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Not to say that you know Sonic Unleashed didn't make a lot of sense, but I mean more so how Flicky doesn't make a lot of sense. A Aware Hedgehog WTF. Come on. Anyways, back to this review. Uh one thing that I have to complain about this game, unfortunately, is when you move your character, it seems that he'll slide ever so, like, a little bit after you moved him. I don't know why. I don't think the level is made out of ice. It could be, and they just don't tell you. Or maybe birds seem to slide every time they walk, but, you know, something's up with that, but... It's just, it's a very minuscule thing to a degree, I mean, it could screw you up a bit from here to there, but, like I said, it's, that's the only complaint I have about this game. Another thing I want to note is its music. I mean, listen to it. How do you describe the music? Something like that. Phenomenal? Cartoony? I don't know. It's very catchy, though, that's for sure. I can find myself easily getting these tunes stuck in my head while walking down the street or at work or some shit like that. It That's what makes this game perfect too because I mean it has everything to make a game really well. And it doesn't focus too much on certain aspects. Other than gameplay. Gameplay is the most important thing you want to focus on. There's a total of 256 levels, which might sound like a lot, but bear in mind that you're only replaying the same 48 levels. Because what it does after you beat the 48th level, it repeats it, but at a faster pace. And it just sort of goes on from there. So it's a very smart idea, and it obviously works very well. But, I personally haven't seen the 48th level. I can only actually get up to the 10th level because, you know, it gets a little bit more difficult there just due to how the level's laid out. Which is a good thing. It's a good thing that I'm having a hard time beating the 10th level because that means I want to play the game again. To try to beat it. Which, eventually I will. Hopefully. As of this recording, I have not yet passed level 10. But I can guarantee the next recording, I will have passed level 10. Which is always a good thing. Promises that I will never keep, though. 
it, what it comes down to is that this game is essentially well made. Very easy to pick up and play. It's addictive, like I've said multiple times during this review. If I haven't gotten it through your head, that you know this is a game worth trying. And there's literally no excuse for you to go out and get this game because it's on multiple collections that Sega's released. It's on, obviously, like I said, the Ultimate Genesis Collection or Mega Drive Collection, depending on where you live. Sonic's Mega Collection or Mega Collection Plus, depending on what system. And it's also on Sonic's Genesis Collection or Mega Drive Collection, depending on where you live, for the PST and the PSP. So, this game's really out on almost every possible thing you can get, you know, today. Uh, you can play on the Wii, you can play on the GameCube, you can play on 360, PS2, PlayStation 3, and if, perhaps if you don't like it, you have other games to try. So, it's a win-win situation when it comes down to. So, overall, I'm giving this game an 8 out of 10, because the one thing I'm not liking is that he slides, ever, he slides a bit, which really could screw you up in some ways. In other ways, it doesn't really matter a whole lot, but... It's just that sort of thing that, you know, prevents me from getting past level 10. But it's a smart decision, because that means I'm going to play it more. And then more. I might not be plugging quarters in, but I'm plugging in time. In fact, I had a hard time pulling myself away from this game just to do the review. So, it's that says something. So, this is a guarantee. Well, I don't want to guarantee it, because I can guarantee it. I can somewhat guarantee that some asshole is going to say this game was terrible. And then I tell him, go play Sonic the Hedgehog on the next-gen systems. And then come back to me and tell me what is terrible. Son of a bitch! God damn it, level 10's hard.